In today's video I have another TX cassette deck. This is a V210. I'm guessing sometime in the 80s. Looks like that socket's a bit broken. This is just another scrap of sort of machine. It says four belts replacement, screws in a bag on top. Top's loose, so let's see what we got. Probably more gooey belts or something. Oh, it's got one of these double-sided sort of circuit boards. Oh yeah, with the resistors actually. Oh, these were a weird era. The resistors are actually some sort of carbon deposit on the actual board. And then you've got like a plated through hole type of arrangement. God, I haven't seen that for a while. Probably didn't last long because I don't know if they were troublesome or not, but probably were. <laughs> Certainly not something easy to, well I guess it would be easy to repair, you could probably just scratch off the copper on the other side and solder a resistor across if they failed, but normally resistors don't fail. PRC registered HDK triangle something, I don't know if that's anything to do with that type of board, but that's etched out of that silver coloured stuff. I guess that's just the coating on the upper part of the board, or was it printed on? Were they printed it on? Like not as in not actually a copper track at all, not your normal printed circuit board, which was just a sheet of copper, which is more an etched circuit board. Yeah, that was a bit of a weird bit of tech. I remember seeing that in certain things. I think one of the national boom boxes I got here is a similar setup to that. And of course batteries leaked all over it and caused havoc in it, which I will get back onto that one day. Oh, we've got some sort of spring loose here. And looks like there used to be a gooey belt on there. We've got a big flat belt, which is actually all right, model good. I don't see any, well, do we have a counter? Oh, yeah, there's a counter up here. Oh, yeah, there's a belt. It feels like it's still intact. I can see this thing wobbling around, whatever that thing is. I don't think those spring, that spring's meant to sit there. It looks like there's a piece. That would have gone around the other way, I reckon. Like that piece, oh, is that the bit? Under that little plastic bit and that, yeah, that would be it, I reckon. That piece would have come up around there because that puts tension on it. I think that's how that would have gone. Not sure what it's supposed to do. Oh, like it stops it so it slides up and down. That makes sense. Even though I have no idea what it actually does. So we might get away with just putting a belt. That must be the reel. Oh, this thing wobbles up and down. I wonder if that's part of a um, auto stop mech. It's one of those sort of oscillating ones, something like the tennyson ones used on the front of a little tiny thing. It's not logic control or anything, is it? It's, this is like the Sony one with all the buttons on the side. I think that's Sony, was it? Was that a 210 or something as well? But whatever model that was, that must have become a thing to, at least a fashion for a short while, to put the buttons on the side rather than under the mech. I mean, it makes a lot of sense because they're out of the way. Not that you have the door open really or anything while you're pressing the buttons normally, but it's got one of these weird plastic encased transformers. What does it say? H-A-T-A. Harta? Unless or Hanta? Is that an N, that lightning strike thing? I remember those being a thing of it with this weird finish on them. Like a couple of different plastic colours mixed together. And what sort of motor we got in here? Looks like a Mabuchi. It is a Mabuchi. Probably a five, oh, 510ED2B2. Counterclockwise, going by the red label, it's 12 volts. Don't think they have a date. Just your line out, ding connector. So nothing too exciting. Can we dismantle this? Possibly from behind without pulling the whole mech out. I don't know if I should or shouldn't pull the whole mech out. I think the front comes off this fairly easy. Then 
again what screws there's one there maybe those two is that all that holds it together kind of feels like it is but mech may be attached and we seem to be attached to the sockets or something do i need to take the knobs off no the pot is loose There's something there holding it. Uh, there is a screw down there. I'd say that screw goes through the circuit board and into the front. Which is a bit of an odd way to do it, but I guess it's a way of supporting the circuit board. That was it. Now can we get much further? Or do I have to, whoops. Doesn't really give us any better access. I guess the other thing to do would be to remove the whole back, the whole circuit board and stuff out of here. That's it. Maybe I should put the front back over that circuit board bit so we don't risk breaking any switches or anything. That's probably what it's supposed to do. It's probably put that screw back in there might help. Although then we don't get any better access to it. <laughs> Maybe if we take the back panel off. Take this display off, I think, for starters. There's no plugs on this ball, look at it. They're all just soldered to each other. Oh, they're round LEDs in there. I wouldn't guess that from the front panel, but and a mix of orange and green and maybe I should take this control off or there's not really much point I don't think let's just flip it over and yeah not real great to work on even then let's get that switch out of the way go away transformer hopefully this just pulls out uh, I don't think it's going to is it what have they done here? Oh yeah, that does come out. I think that cable tie has got to go. Get all that rubbish out of the way. And this, oh, this does actually plug in, I think. Oh, yeah, if we cut another cable tie, we can unplug the mechanism completely. And yeah, finally, I probably should have took that volume control off and I'd be completely free, but anyway, that's enough. Maybe enough to work on this thing. Yeah, now it's going to scrape on there. I think that's got to go. That's just going to be a pain otherwise. Hmm, I don't think even the socket's going to fit right down there. It's a very long pot shaft. Of course. Probably don't want this front panel scraping on the. Scraping on the bot, the back cover or whatever it is, because then you just get scratches on it. Okay, so now we've got a separate front panel. Get these screws in one pile would help. So should be able to just remove these screws and I think with this one I might just do a resurrection then I is it worth getting all I reckon there's four belts in it could be another one hiding behind the motor at least hidden from where I'm looking so I know where three belts are I think actually it might be it's got a spring on it? No. What we probably can do is start removing switches so we can get rid of some of this wiring harness. Ah, oh, there's another one going under there, isn't that? That'd be right. So much for that theory. It doesn't look like 
that's going to reduce the wiring harness but this one could do with going so that's got a bigger screw that other back on had a small screw we've got here some other that's another switch there they're everywhere let's just flip that up and out of the way I don't know if there's much point where does that go oh, all the way under here somewhere loosen another switch here but then it's still not going to really make much difference I have to lift the caps and get that out I think oh that's got a little bearing still sitting on the back of it yeah someone's had a bit of a fiddle with some rotten belt there I think so I'm not get the get the acetone onto that try and clean that up better be a bit careful because this has got a clutching it by the look of it so I don't think we want acetone on any of that but we do want all this black stuff gone if possible or as much as we can get easily mm, still a bit down in there I think that might be a bit difficult to get out let's just give the motor a clean too yeah, yeah there's definitely goo on there but that's not going down very deep try and squish these cotton buds down a bit Pretty clean, I reckon it might need a bit more yet. It just seems to keep coming. But it's best to do it until it's no more coming off. I think that's got the worst of that. Just try this motor pulley. Yeah, there's definitely some bad stuff coming off that. Completely blackening up the cotton bud again. Okay, third cotton bud. We'll give them one more clean and that should be it, I think. Still a little bit of residue coming. That's got most of it the first go on that motor pulley. Ah, oh. probably be a good idea to do the capstan itself, even though, well, we've got a different belt on that one, but this is probably good for removing residues of all sorts. It looks like there's a few bits of possibly the other belt have fallen on you. Uh, there's a lot of black stuff coming off there considering and I might do the motor this has got like cigarette smoke type staining on there a bit of cigarette tar or could be wood heater smoke or something else but it also could actually be the rubber I think sometimes that rubber leaves a yellow stain on things around it yeah I think that belt has picked up some bits of rubber off the other one yeah there's a gooey bit there there's looks like something's been flattened into it underneath so it's probably best to replace it a bit definitely something oily on the edge of it so we definitely want to replace that uh do we want to do the caps and i guess oh, what's that something's moving around here uh, some lever might as well have a look at what this capstan's set up like. Doesn't seem to have anything on the front of it. Oh, there's a bearing on the back, don't forget. There's a spring on the front of it. Cool, that looks a bit like it's been cut into or something. Is it just, oh, maybe it's just oil or something, is it? 
There's a ring or something on there, but oh yeah, it's a bit of someone has lubed it up already by the look of it. Yeah, I thought it was actually a ring of ring that's cut into the metal or something, but I'll give the whole thing a clean while I've got it out. It's got some yellowy brown stuff coming off of the tape guys. Chances are the oil's old anyway, if it is a bit of oil or grease. Now there is a mark there that's staying. Can't feel it, so it can't be too bad. Oh yeah, now it's coming back again. Maybe I made it disappear a bit by putting some oil in it. Weird. Yeah, it's definitely got a mark there. I guess this rear bearing, we'll just carefully remove that and clean that bit too. Not much coming off there, but that could probably do with a little bit of oil, let the metho evaporate. Tiny bit of oil on there, tiny bit on there. There's a plastic washer in there. Shall we get that back on? Must be where the other side of that spring sits. And that's it, it's just the bracket holds it in. Heads and pin trial I could do with it clean. But we'll worry about that later. At least we've got one belt to guide us. Now where did I swing that out from under there I think? Like so, wasn't it? That would be it. That would go through there, yep. Just have an idea what the other belt size is. So it's around that pulley and a bit bigger. Probably another fairly short one, I think. One of these type of things. It's going to be about there to maybe a bit bigger. That's going to be close, I think. Yeah, which one goes on first? I guess I'll just might as well find out if this one's going to fit or not before I worry about the other belt. I might grab that with some pliers so I can get it on the motor pulley. That might actually, yeah, it's loose. <laughs> yeah, I'm in position and that's quite loose. Oh, well, there you go. So much for my little thing on the top there. That one. I wonder if that's still too big. Only one way to find out. That's probably pretty good. I don't want to get the motor finally into place. Ah, oh, we're not actually on the motor pulley. Well, we are on the motor pulley, but we're not on the particular piece of that belt. We're on where the flat belt's meant to go. So that's going to make it a little looser. Yeah, that's a bit too loose. I can see it bulging up when I turn it. Yeah, definitely too big. Bigger, I guess we have to go maybe one of these small ones. So I've got something in between. I guess I'm a bit too much of a jump. That might be what I want. Yeah, that's it. That's the intermediate one again. Get it on the lower pulley. That's the one, I think. That's winding all sorts of gears in there. I think it does more than just the. I don't know if this mech has some something to lift the heads or anything. Yeah, it does. But look at it. This is a semi semi soft touch kind of thing. The buttons aren't particularly soft touch, but it does wind it up. Oh, got to get the other belt. So after all that trouble getting that on, just to find out if it was the right belt. What is going on here? This switch has reattached itself. Let's, uh, yeah, just leave that there somewhere. Okay, this is going to be fun. No doubt trying to get a pair of them on there. Oh, let's get this bracket right out of the way, I think. This wiring is going to be annoying. They always have to have something in the way. Got 
I'll, well, I don't know, they, how do they do it in the factory? Because that, that wiring goes in under other bits. I guess if you take the mech off, that's probably the point, isn't it? If you take the mech right off the front, you can probably get rid of those other switches. That's how they would have done it in the factory. All this would have been assembled without any of the wiring on it. Okay, let's get this. Ah, it's just, it really just wants to drop straight off these things. They're not a nice thing to get things onto. I have to sort of pull. Ah, see, it's going to drop off before I even get there. Let alone get a second belt on. Yeah, these are probably the worst type of all with the twin belts on the same pulley. One a big flat belt. It's probably why they got rid of flat belts because they're just ridiculous, really. Like it's alright just in a turntable or something, but on this sort of mech I might have to get rid of that other switch I think, that's just this wiring is annoying as hell let's get that little turn out of the way and this belt doesn't help that it's a bit oddly shaped okay now we're there ah oh, no, as soon as you move it the wiring moves with it I may even have to do these belts separately, just everything grips onto everything. I'm not sure how I'm going to do this. Hang on, that goes here on the upper. Okay, so if we get that under, and this is just going to be very difficult to juggle, I think because it just wants to fall straight off the capstan and you, they put a bracket here so you can't get the other one onto the motor pulley after you sit it in place with the capstan one on and there's not enough hands on the human body to do this yeah that's a really horrible one and that just refuses to go on as well and that's on there. Ah, oh, come here. Yeah, I should be if I can grab that belt. If, since I can't really get hold of it, and lift this one up while stretching it out, and then we stretch the other one out over the pulley, that's it. And of course, none of it's on camera. But basically, once you get, get the big belt onto the pulley and keep your motor stretched this way, and then grab hold of the end, get this one onto the idler thing, this big white plastic one, and again pull it over this way, get it with the pliers, keep it stretched, keep this one stretched as you lift it up, and then you can hook the lower one over the pulley, then drop it back into place. So not real easy. Let's get that screwed back on before anything comes off again. Yeah, better just give it a run make sure it doesn't come off so yeah they're quite difficult those sort of double ones probably not so bad if you do them on a regular basis but when you don't do them all the time they can be quite difficult I'd like to know how many different cassette mechanisms actually exist there must be over a thousand different ones they're all Oh, we'll have a different way of doing things. Now I said the big switch, I think, big screw, sorry, went there, I think, and the small one went on this one, I think. But yeah, they're all all different. So many different ones. Like just about every model of TEC made, I think, has a different mech in it. There must be some like slight ones that are slight variations of other ones. They'd have a common one, but although is this mech anything like that other one I trashed? I must have a look. That one I did a resurrection on. Where did that go? That's an older issue. No, definitely. That's that's that other one. Although the motor's in the same spot, but yeah, that's about it. <laughs> well, the buttons are underneath on that one, so that was a. V33, quite a bit older, I assume if the model numbers went up incrementally. So nothing like it. 
and I'm yet to see I think two tape decks with the same mech in them but there must be some that like I say there were some that were slight variants of each other but it's like every year they put out a new, at least a new mechanism that's really how crazy it used to be a bit like VCRs I almost did the same with them in their heyday every year or two there was a completely new mechanism and model series came out so they they just kept designing more. Well, I'm going to have to take the mech off now anyway, I guess. We might as well have a look at what, see what it is. Because there's a counterbelt. And was there another belt down there? Was that just the counterbelt? I've forgotten now. Open the door, always helps. Ah, yeah, there's the counter belt. Don't know why they thought there were four belts in here. I'm not seeing any sign of a fourth one. Yeah, interesting little mech, very plastic. And everything out in the open on this side, pretty much. Because it doesn't have the usual slide bar assembly, that's all in the back. With these side mounted things. So uh, yeah, interesting, but I might change that belt, yeah, it's not looking very good, and if the other's starting to go to goo, I think we've got to take the counter off. Certainly helps. I guess one thing we've got to do, clean the, clean the this dust out of here. At least the Pinch roll looks to be in good condition. Dust on the reels. Grease is alright, I think. The head could do with a clean. Quite a bit of caked on muck there. Is that part of the head or is it not coming off? Yeah, no, that was definitely not part of the head. It had a bit next to the head that didn't want to come off. Don't know what that is. It isn't tape oxide, I don't think. Unless that's got a bit of belt on there or something. I did clean the capstan, but I'll clean it again, as I always do, because it may have oil and grease and stuff on it from touching it, and especially pushing it through the bearing and or bushing. It will have took some of the oil or old grease or whatever's in there with it. That's got the pinch roller fairly clean, not perfect, but that'll do. A little noisy. Good computer game sound effect. But to be fair, it doesn't run that fast normally. It's running quite... If I was really picky, I'd probably lube it a little bit, but I try and keep lube away from the pinch roller if I can. That probably needs a clean. And at least we've got another belt that we can find an equivalent to. Too big, I think. Way too big. It's a bit too small, but it's probably not that far off because it, it's a bit stretched, I think. down in this region somewhere yeah that's more like it I think chuck the old one out before I mix it up with the new ones how's it going under that piece I guess I probably should have really cleaned the pulleys and that but it's not not a very critical build, it doesn't really do any work. So I don't worry about them too much, the counter belts, but... And the pulleys cleaning, because they're just running a very light thing. They're not going to slip in a hurry, it's not like it's going to affect sound quality or anything. Yeah, 
there's those two more leaf switches so that's what five leaf switches i think that's rather over the top but not like i say one of them may be something to do with auto stop or something But yeah, most of this is run by a gear. Well, that's probably, I oh know that's not, that's just more idler stuff. Maybe there's a big gear on the other side that runs a lot of the stuff. So we're not gonna see anything actuated until that happens. Probably should clean the buttons, but anyway, that'll be all right, I think. Something's not lining up. Now you've got to hook it under this, this brackety bit. Two of the switches have to hook in under that and then tilt the other side down. Yeah, I don't know how many model tape decks TAC actually put out, but again, I'd say it was close to one a year or something for quite a while, through probably most of the 70s and 80s and 90s for that matter, although some of that stuff you wouldn't call a TAC. <laughs> it isn't proper TAC stuff, but the Japanese stuff. Was probably around 20 models or more, like main models, but then there's yeah, lower end ones and higher end ones and different versions of the same one. Seems to sound rather good. Looks like you can fast forward without the play coming off. Do I hear? I don't forget any music search, but it's making a noise there, but it doesn't lock in. So I don't think it's got music search, but you can use it if you just listen, I guess. That sounds like it's probably a pretty good tape deck. Don't think there's much wow in it, but we'll give it a line and tape a quick, quick run. Yeah, there's a little bit there by the sound of it. Pretty much any deck this age is going to have some, I would think. Ooh, something's making a noise. Didn't do that without a tape in there, did it? it's not the tape yeah interesting is it because that tape's a longer one or is that tape starting to have, starting to play up that's well, a decent length tape sounds a bit like we've got gears grating there oh yeah quick <laughs> At least it stopped us. Oh, I got to the end and did that. That's a worry. So it's definitely with the high tension at the end kind of thing. And then it grates before it turns off. That's a worry. It means something's slipping. Where are they? It must be these gears. Oh, there's, that's one of the real gears. Also, I wasn't fast forwarding, it must have been rewinding. So it must be those gears. I can see this little springed pl white plastic thing moving around a bit as it clicks. But, ooh, don't like that. <laughs> don't know if there's meant to be a clutch there or something, but that's got an issue. Now, Pause, play record, turn up the level. You could only see through my Let's start again. I hit record play before, but then I gotta hit the record button by all of it, so that's a nice feature. Yeah, funny old VU meter. Seems a bit slower or something than usual. Dunno, it just looks kind of different to me for some reason. So I 
similar level, but the one channel, oh, of course, as soon as I say that, it looks fine. Or did it go into a different recording? It probably did, because I only did a short one, but it's a little low on one channel. Even though they are matched to start with. Or maybe I've got the knob a little bit out there, but they looked about equal. So I could find, if we can, bias playback left and right. Record left and right. So which one was it? The top one left. So that must be the record left. We could try tweaking that up a little bit. Oh, someone's already. Oh, they're both kind of maxed out on both at one end anyway. What happens if we turn it back that way a bit? Only one way to find out. Hmm. Turn them both up a bit too far now. Really like really like oh, so far so good, it's about equal. Well, that's interesting, I mean... Has someone turned those pots right to the end for some reason? Looks like someone's too... I might turn them in a little bit so they're not... Maybe it's because it's sitting on the end. What have we got? TDA 7629P Dolby chips in this one. I think I've seen that in some other ones. Yeah, it's certainly working pretty good. Not quite perfect, but that'll do. I don't know what I can do about that rewind or whether it's worth trying to do anything of course this is a problem when you put them all back together you, you find out there's some other issue guess we should probably have a quick look at it okay I've just got this just took the front panel on off and took this off the back of the front panel so let's put it in rewind oh, of course it's not going to operate for us is it is there a sensor on the counter no, I don't think we saw a sensor on the counter. Oh, there we go. If you hold it hard enough. It's that little white wheel, I think, yeah. Hang on, that white wheel doesn't directly... So this goes onto the top part of these two gears. So is there a clutch there, or is that just, I think that's just a fixed gear. That goes on to that white gear. The white gear goes on to this other white gear, which uh, comes back to our, where our belt turns here. Although that gear is again separate from, can't quite see how that works. But I have no idea why it would be grating like that. That'd be fair. I don't think that is the... Yeah, that's... Well... Have we got a slightly tight... It does feel a little bit tight, that thing. Let's remove power on if we need to lubricate this. Little... Reel. I'll oh, get this split washer thing off it. Yeah, if it'll come. What are you doing? They're all different. We've got a bunch of bits and pieces there. Well, then I'll remove everything, clean it. Clean everything and go from there. Lube it because it's got some grease that sits on that little black washer there. Oh, there's a little white washer thing under that that goes under that spring, so we'll just clean all them off. It's not really a little white washer, I don't know what that thing is. Can't even hold on to it. I'm trying to see it, but yeah, that's got some not so good grease in it, I think. Oh, that slots into this other little 
black piece here I guess it's got a couple of pins that go into that but first we've got to get a spring on and then that piece we need to make sure that drops in in the right spot I guess like that of course it won't stay there but I wonder how you do that with the reel on come here And just be careful oh, this doesn't uh, it was on and it came off again because it's getting into the slot where the other one sits where the split washer goes I wonder if that could be the issue could that be not locking in I guess when we put this on we've got to sort that out so let's put a bit of light oil on there Oops, a little bit too much on there. I don't want the lightest coating. That's it, so it definitely went on, so I don't think this will go back together anyway without that fitting in place. not the loosest but I think it's a little bit looser than it was but I don't know if that's enough to but at least we can put the tape in well we've got it in pieces yeah, it's still clicking the bit that is on is this little white bit here at the top you can see and it's jumping up and down a bit It's definitely made it better it seems because it didn't squeal at the end or didn't grate at the end a little bit there but that's they both seem to make grating slight grating sounds it's better but <laughs> I wouldn't call that a good quality sounding mech But at least there's some sort of clutch seems to be working like it should. How does that engage? We're in rewind but nothing's engaging. weird oh because of course this has got the lift up mech hasn't it that's right that's um so it could be something to do with the mechanism not oh here we go something so this is so you can see this whole piece pivoting up until it meets that and then something release there so that's re rewind mode if these gears aren't, if that isn't lifted into place properly or something there's so many little things it could be let's hold that yeah, as soon as you do it, so this, this thing pivots across and grates it's not hard to do that should be going that way Interestingly, when you print and rewind going the right way, it doesn't do it. Oh, but it operates the auto stop. But maybe what I was getting it to do was the correct thing in the other direction anyway. Oh, yeah, so that just. What was I doing before? Was I going the wrong way or something? I think I was turning it that way. So the yellow gear is jumping around this one. It's quite loose in there. What the hell is supposed to hold that in place? 
Is that this yellow lever? There's nothing. Well, nothing obvious. It's just loose in there. Oh, is it on the same pivot as this one? Hang on, wasn't that moving relative to the other one? It does. So that could be the issue, something to do. I don't really fancy pulling this whole thing to bits. I reckon we've got, possibly got something loose with this bit. Seems awfully loose in there. What's it sit on there? I wonder if it's split or something. Seems to have a metal pin maybe in the middle. Because that's the sort of thing that'll fail on these things. I think you've got to take this front plate bit off. Uh, do I really want to do that? Not particularly, but maybe we'll have a quick look if we take this. I reckon if we take this bit off. Grease is still good at least. Oh, we got a little ball bearing there. My god, did that just come out when I did that? Probably did. I don't think that would have been loose before, but oh, that's a shocking design. Oh, so that comes apart very easy. Just don't lose the ball bearing. So now we can see. Oh, so it just sits on a little pin thing here. What on earth? Oh, it just sits. Oh, it is on the white piece then. Has it got too much play in it? Certainly with a hole. How does that move? It's not the whole thing moving, is it? Yeah, it's got quite a bit of play in there. But, on the other hand, how can it possibly slip against that one? Yeah, I'm sure it was slipping against it. Unless it's... Yeah, it can't grate against the other one. Uh, now I have to try with all these bits hanging off to get this thing into rewind mode. I think I'm going the wrong way again. At least we can see what we're doing now. Oh, that gear's not, not really. Oh, is that because we're up and loose? Not aligning. Ah, oh, I stuffed up there. I kept going. It doesn't align with the other one real well. and it sits too high. Let's go the other way. Oh no, it is jumping against that one, is it? Ah, oh, hang on, this mix unwinding from its mode. Which it uh, didn't do before, then it goes to auto stop. Why didn't it do that before? Yeah, this whole thing does not seem to sit the best. Being plastic stuff, it's not surprising. What's it actually? Nothing really holds it there much, it seems. There must be a pin under there. Oh, yeah, the pin goes in a slot in the deck, so the whole thing's got a heap of play in it. The other possibility is that gear's moved. It does seem to push down a bit. Well, I guess one thing we could do is maybe lube these up a little bit, but I don't think it's going to help a lot. But if there's an issue with lubrication, I don't think there is. But it can be a problem with these things is actually even working out what's folding it on. I mean, back when you could get parts, you'd probably just order this white bit and the two gears or whatever and just replace a lot of it. Because something's probably out by some tiny little amount. And no amount of work is going to help you f work out which particular bit it is that's faulty. Because it's just some tiny little tolerance that's out a bit. So sometimes even with mechanical stuff you've got to blanket change the bits. Because especially plastic stuff it does wear or warp. It can get tiny little amounts out. I 
Not sure if I can really run it with a keeps clicking off on me. I'm going the wrong way, I think. And I can tell with the type. It'll probably be identical to before. Yep. At least it doesn't grade as bad as it originally did, although it does now. <laughs> Well, I think it's slightly better, but that was just that initial work I did. Not the greatest design, the way it's all held together, and I think these plastic bits are a little looser than they probably should be. I don't like the way that gear moves around, that seems like too much play, but that's about all I can do with that. Put it back together and give it a final test. Oh, well, the best test is to do it inside the thing. I've got to tape in there. Yeah, what do I want? Rewind. <laughs> of course, it's nice and noisy once you put it back together. Try fast forwarding through a bit more first. No, that's going to play up just as bad as before, I think. Of course, once you put it all back together. It doesn't really matter what you do, I don't think. Uh, I guess we better try it. Sad face comes to my place and never You decide to dance, no one did cry for this name. Even on that rather horrible bit of leader tape there, it's working all right, but I think that tape's getting pretty bad now. I think that's all I can really do with this one basically got it running again managed to get all the belts in there but of course we do have a bit of a noisy gear issue so without another deck to pinch some bits out of if you could find a good second hand one not a lot I can do with that I think it's just wearing wear or something in those uh, in those decks and well the cover's all scratchy and horrible on this thing anyway Not exactly a prime tape deck, just a standard sort of domestic one. But it's good to get another one resurrected. Just to see that it can be done. But it's good to get that all back together. I say I actually don't mind the look of this one. It's a nice a simple sort of square plainish kind of front. But yeah, not too old, not too new. I kind of like that type of era, even though it's nothing special, this one. But anyway, it's, it's going as good as it's going to go for now. So thanks for watching.